are you doing today? Uh, how was your set? Uh, my set was really well. Um, uh, I played a bit more of the progressive stuff that uh, I've really been into lately and um, some more of the uplifting stuff that people are uh, used to for me. And um, yeah, it was really great. Great response from the crowd. And um, yeah, as I've had so far with all other Luminosity parties, uh, everyone is really um, into the music, really into the whole set, very interactive with me. And uh, yeah, well, the, that's, that's the best kind of crowd you can have. You're 17 years old right now. Uh, do you ever get tired of questions about your age? Uh, I sometimes do, but then again, I understand that it's not something you uh, experience every day that you find a 17 year old uh, doing what I do. But um, yeah, it's, it's not like I'm really annoyed by it. But, yeah, no. What's the pressure like? Um, I know Armin ha has a quote that he said that you'll be one of the top producers in trance before you reach legal drinking age in the Netherlands. What's the pressure like? Uh, well, I don't, I don't really think there's a pressure. I still keep doing what uh, I want to do uh, myself. And um, yeah, I, I, if there's a pressure, then it's a pressure that comes from myself. I want to keep pushing myself to the max and um, make sure I do my best to get as far as possible. And um, yeah, there's not really any pressure from outside. There's uh, a lot of support, actually, instead of pressure. And um, yeah, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm not at my top yet, so I just keep doing what I do and uh, ask as much as possible for myself. That sounds really good. Uh, you produced your first track when you were seven years old. Correct. What did that sound like? And um, yeah, what did it sound like? Um, well, my very, very, very first track was probably just something I made within a few hours uh, someday when I was uh, playing around with music. But if you really look at the, the first complete track I made, then um, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed for it right now because, <laughs> yeah, it, it's so amateuristic. But then again, I was seven, seven, eight, so it, it, you can't expect a seven or eight year old to make a perfect track. But um, yeah, yeah, I think my parents uh, already knew uh, back then that I had the potential to uh, become bigger with it and uh, make something out of it. And um, so yeah, it, 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 you start like make, producing terrible tracks, and uh, everybody does. And you just have to be patient enough and uh, to keep on going until you are at a level where you can produce some decent track. Your first contact with trance was back in 2003, 2004, hearing sets from Tiesto. Um, how do you see trance evolving? Because it, it has changed a lot since then. How do you see it evolve even more in the future? Uh, well, I think cause r right now trance is like blending with house, dubstep, uh, electro house, all kinds of genres. And I don't think that's going to stop in the, well, at least in the next two years. And um, I don't really mind. For me as a producer, uh, it gives me new opportunities to try different styles, uh, different kind of tracks, different structures in my productions. And um, yeah, I've, Trends has had like a peak back in the days. And um, it's looking like it's going to have another one really soon. It's getting bigger, it's getting uh, more promotion. Like trance is becoming a more known genre. It's being played on the radio and stuff. So yeah, I think it's it's going to be a lot bigger than it is right now. And um, I honestly can't wait until that happens. Uh, right after uh, you heard the sets from Tiesto, the first uh, trance connection of yours, what happened then? How did you get into producing? And what happened right after that? Uh, well, uh, between uh, listening to Chester's DVD and actually started producing, it's like this whole process of uh, searching uh, artists on YouTube. Because I watched the DVD, and I wanted to find out what he was playing. What? Because I like the tracks, and I wanted to find out who made them. And uh, yeah, I've been like looking on YouTube for those tracks for about a year or even two years. Um, at a certain point I thought, I don't just want to listen to this, I want to try and make this. Because I, I was so passionate about music already. And, and it just seemed like a logical step for me to start making my own music. And um, yeah, in the beginning I really tried to base my, uh, my productions, my sound on what others did. And uh, eventually I started like to evolve my own kind of sound. And, um, yeah, that's basically what I did after hearing a DVD and um, when I got my first music program, that was probably about two or three years after that. 
Um, yeah, that's where it actually all began. And uh, between that, I didn't do any producing, but just got more and more into the music itself. Um, you you produce, I mean, everything from chill to progressive to pure uplifting. Uh, how hard is it to different to do those different styles, and where do you feel most at home? Um, I think because um, it really differs. Like um, for the last few years, I've been producing uplifting mainly, and that's something I've really liked. But right now, I'm experimenting with all kinds of styles, and I'm still a bit searching what my favorite is of those and uh, where I want to go. But I'm really into the the more progressive stuff, as you can hear in my latest uh, EP, the Sudin EP. It's really a blend of the really, really deep kind of house, the more house trendy, like uh, you'll hear on a label like Injuna Deep, and um, the third track, which is the remote of the original. Um, it's like this electronic post-rock something. I don't really know what to call it, because uh, that's one of the problems we had when we decided to release the track. We were like, what are we going to call this? We have no idea what it is. And um, for me, that's it's really fun to produce tracks like that. I don't necessarily feel like I have to make a certain genre, but um, yeah, if I really have to decide where I feel most at home, then it's uh, probably more into that direction. And um, yeah, the, the more clubby trends as well. It's like two different styles that I'm really into. It's the really progressive stuff and the more clubby trends. And uh, yeah, I really want to keep producing both. It's not really like I want to go in one certain direction. I want to keep my options open. the typical Juventa elements in your productions and do you do you yourself see them in your chill or your progressive and your uplifting as well tracks um, well I think for, for me it's really hard to like point out a certain sound or thing that's uh, typical for me but uh, for artists it's probably more easy to hear because yeah I, I listen to my own stuff all day long and I sometimes really get tired of it but um, yeah, a few elements that I've been using a lot is um, some of the sine wave synths I really like. And um, well, yeah, lately um, I'm really into vocal chops. That's something that's been in uh, a lot of my productions, and I really think it gives it gives the track that little extra thing. And um, yeah, I think uh, if there's something typical, then it's the sound as a whole. And um, it's really hard to describe what that sound is. It's, it's something like um, you would probably recognize the track by Armin, not mainly because there's a certain sound Armin keeps using, but because you know Armin's sound and you recognize it. And I think it's the same with my productions. You have a new vocal track going on. Yes. What can you tell us about it right now? Uh, Your first vocal track. Yeah, it's my very, very first vocal track, and I'm really excited to work on it. Cause, uh, I've been working with vocals uh, in the past, but on remixes. And um, to actually work on a track with my own focus and it's really, really awesome. And I'm really looking forward to finishing it. I'm still working on it. And um, it's uh, the focus are from a uh, well-known singer, Jessa. Uh, her sister is uh, singing as well, and she's doing the focus for the track. And um, yeah, I basically got a little sample of uh, something she sang. And um, I kind of built a track around it and sent it back to the label. And I really like the idea, so the folks are being re-recorded. Um, I'm making a few more adjustments to the track, but um, uh, it's, it's going to be big. It's going to be big, yes. You started DJing last year. Uh, what, is it, what was your first gig like and what is it like to play your own tracks up there? Uh, my first gig was, uh, funny enough, for Luminosity as well. And uh, it's the Christmas edition and I remember I was really really nervous when I um, when I got there and um, I actually felt a bit sick before I had to go play but um, eventually it all turned out well and um, I felt great I had a great set great crowd and uh, from that point on I knew it was something I wanted to do as well next to the producing and um, yeah I've, I've been doing it for about a year and a half right now and um, I really like the feeling of playing my own tracks 
and um, well, road testing a few of the new tracks as well, of course, that nobody has heard yet. Like I, I did tonight, I brought a few of my new exclusive tracks and they went down really, really well. And uh, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, you'll hear a few more of them tomorrow at ASAP. So uh, definitely going to be there. What do you have going on production-wise right now? Apart from the vocal track? Uh, apart from the vocal track, I have a uh, collaboration with um, Dutch-Italian trio, ans 42 We've been working on it for uh, quite a while right now, and uh, we've finally come to a point where we think the track is good enough to release. And um, I have a new uh, EP lined up. Um, it's not been, it hasn't been played yet, but um, I think it's going to be really, really nice. And um, yeah, of course, I'm always busy remixing, so uh, there's definitely going to be a few more remixes out soon. Sounds like you'll have a busy 2012 then. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Juventa, and thank you for watching this interview. Cheers. There's one foundation that matches 97% of UK skin tones. True Match Foundation by L'Oreal. Don't mismatch, True Match. With 22 shades from light to dark, warm to neutral to cool. Super blendable. Perfectly matches your skin tone and texture. True Match Foundation by L'Oreal Paris. 97% of UK skin tones. Matched. A foundation for the nation. Why? Because you're worth it.